Cisco Firepower Threat Defense, Snort version 3. We'll talk about rule rewrites. All right, there's going to be times where one may need to modify a rule to meet the needs of an organization, and Firepower Threat Defense allows one to rewrite the rules, edit Talos rules, and create customized rules. We will use the new rule rewrite action to enable rules to replace packet contents. In Snort, these rules use the alert action, but in Snort version 3, the rewrite action is required to enable use of the replace keyword. In this scenario, a user wants to enable some of the Talos content-replace rules for TeamViewer. We're going to get into that. These rules are not enabled by default in any of the Talos-based policies, and we're going to check this out right here, right now. All right, we're in Firepower Threat Defense. Let's go to Policies. Intrusion, and we'll go to Snort version 3, and we're going to search for Team Viewer here. Now we can see a couple of rules here. Let's go ahead and check one out here. This is the content dash replace Team Viewer remote connection attempt. And you can see here, there's the entire rule. And we're going to come in and we're going to edit this rule. But before we edit that rule, let's go ahead and change the rule to rewrite. The rule action of rewrite. Remember, this is new in version 3 of Snort. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we'll go back. Remember, it auto saves, but in order for the firepower device to take the new changes, you do have to push policy. And now we're actually going to modify that rule. It says when you duplicate a Talos intrusion rule, you must change the SID to be unique greater than 1 million. And here we can see the rule itself and we have the ability to edit it right here. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to change this from alert to pass. We're going to change the home net variable to a specific host. And we'll go ahead and change the, so let's go ahead. We're going to make some other modifications here. Let's remove the replace and we'll go ahead and change the SID here. All right, we're going to create a rule group here. We're going to call this a custom pass rule. And we'll go ahead and save that out. And we'll save as new. Looks good. All right, now that that rule has been created, let's go ahead and add local rule and custom pass rules. We'll go ahead and save that. And at the top here, we see local rules, custom pass rules, and we can see that rule that we created. All right, again, push policy. We're not going to sit here and watch this. So let's get it started and move on. All right, so in this scenario, we're gonna actually edit a custom rule. So this is the rule that we've already created and we're gonna go ahead and edit this rule. So we're gonna change the content-replace with something specific here. Let's go ahead and change that message to allow Bob to use TeamViewer. And let's add a remark. We're going to call rule added June 24, 2022 for Bob Thomas's access to TeamViewer. And 
And the other thing that we got to do here is let's change the revision number to two. Let's expand that rule. And here we can see our changes. Everything looks, everything looks good. So you can see how easy it is to take an existing rule, fully customize it based on the needs of an organization. This is critically important when you have all kinds of different assets in your organization and you want to come in and tune those signatures to meet the needs of the, and demands of that organization. Security is tough business and default signatures alone won't cut it. Thank you.